Hey, how's everybody doing today? Well, Jesus loves you, and we're here to learn about Jesus today. Do you know that he takes delight in you? And you are awesome. You're created in his image. And do you know that you are a masterpiece in the potter's hands? Yes, you are his clay. And you just say, oh, Jesus, take me and make me into into whatever you want me to be and do for you today. <laughs> That's what we say every day. And how awesome is our God. He is great and he is worthy to be praised. Look, spend some time in the word every day and worship him. And get on your knees, get on your face and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for what you're going to do. I bless you. I just glorify your name here on this earth, just like in heaven. It's just like heaven is on this earth now and the time is now. <laughs> and how awesome is that? So we are in James today and we're just going through um, whatever the Lord wants to do. See, he just uses me. So you just wake up every day and you say, Jesus, what do you want me to do? And then he'll tell you to do stuff like this. So it's awesome. All right. So we're starting in James 4. And um, we are starting at verse 14. Whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord's will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. So we are learning from Jesus today. Do you know that your life is but a vapor? I mean, take one breath right now. Go like this. Go. That's how long your life is compared to eternity. And he wants every single day of our life to mean something. He, he wants us to leave a mark in this world. And he wants us just to be like Jesus is in this world. It is possible, okay? If Jesus came and um, healed people and extended mercy, extended grace, gave compassion, was humble at heart, gave away every single thing that he had so people can live, I mean, we are able to do the same thing. In fact... It says, greater works are we to do now that Jesus has gone up and is set at the right hand of God the Father. So even greater works are we to do now that Jesus is set at the right hand of the throne of God in heaven. So what are the works? The works is healing, restoring, uh, taking captivity captive. Uh, restoring the law, seeking that which needs to be found, going out and being compelled and driven by the love of God, um, to extend mercy and grace and to um, give a word. Uh, just tell people, you know, every time I see um, a girl, I say, hi, beautiful, you know, and it's like just a word. It's a seed. Every word that we speak is a seed into somebody's life. It is, it grows. You know, when we walk away, that seed is going to grow. So when you give mercy, mercy, kindness, goodness, every single thing into people, it may not, we may not see the evidence immediately, but it grows just like, the parable of the fig tree, when Jesus cursed it, it died immediately. We have death and life in the power of our tongue. So when we speak life, we have power to resurrect the dead. Woo! Glory be to God. You know, I mean, let's go raise the dead back to life. We got hands to heal. You know, we have eyes to see now. And Jesus, he 
he, um, you know, tore the veil. He opened the gate. He's the door into the sheepfold. I mean, we have entered in. There has to be some evidence that he came inside of your life. You know, there has to be some fruit into perfection, he says. There has to be holiness and, um, and purity um, in your life. He says, this is the signs that I have come into your life. And um, it says that, therefore, to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. So really, if we have Jesus and we know of his love, his unfathomable love that never fails, that people need to have. And um, when we have that, and if we are walking down the street or if we go, um, you know, to a gas station, a store anywhere, and we see people, you know, crying or, or um, you know, we, we run into all of these things, you know, um, I'll just, a lady yesterday, she was, um, she was crying and, um, she lost her sister and, um, you know, she, she suffered loss of a family member and I was blessed, you know, to, to pray with her and I held her in my arms as she weeped and it's like, she needed that. She needed somebody to say, hey, Jesus loves you. Jesus comforts you um, during this time. And that's what we need to extend to people. He says, how are they going to know if you don't open up your mouth? You know, if I were to have walking away from Janice and said, hey, I don't see you. You know, I don't see pain or, or that such a a sin to walk away and to not um, say that you can have comfort this day you can have love and um, so so I knew um, I know Jesus so I stopped but if I were to have left and walked away that would have been a sin we need to have time and stop for the one you know, sometimes, um, you know, you think that, oh, I can't stop. I'm, you know, too busy with me, myself, and I, you know. And, um, you know, it's all about you and you and more of you. Well, you need to just die and get rid of you. I'll tell you that right now. Because um, in order um, to live for God... And to have this great, exceedingly, abundantly love and um, mercy and the fullness of his riches, you have to die completely. And it's a process, but I tell you, it is possible. And once, it's, uh, once you do it, it, you'll find freedom and liberty. And, um, and that is where life is. And... Um, and it's like we you have to humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up because he is the one that lifts us up. And um, and it's awesome that we are uh, to know that this life is but a vapor. Let's use every second of our life to please the father, just like Jesus. Jesus did everything that pleased his father because he loved him. He was compelled by the love of his father. And um, what a great reward it is. Because um, in Jesus is the fullness of the riches of glory. He supplies all of our need. He goes exceedingly abundantly. He gives to us more than we could ever imagine or hope for. And he reveals his truth to us. And I just pray for you right now. I pray that he gives you a boldness. Um, and that you will just touch every flesh, all flesh that moves. And you're moved by the power of his might and the spirit that lives within you. 
I pray that he gives you an anointing today that destroys every yoke um, of bondage that's within you, that's within the people that you touch, and that you will be able to discern um, the difference between good and evil, right and wrong, and that he just brings you into this place of, of, of intimacy with him, of fellowship with him, that you diligently seek him with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength, and that you love your neighbor as, your, as yourself. And that is important um, because he says that he is patient. Um, be patient, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth. You're the fruit of the earth. And has long patience for it until he receives the early and later rain. So I pray right now that the rain pours down on you. The heavens rain that reaps the harvest, that reaps just all the fruits of the Spirit, the compassion, the mercy, the grace, the peace of God, every good gift uh, just rain on, to you, on you today from within your heart and just flows throughout and courses throughout your body and just know that um, Jesus loves you and he is the great I am and you are the I am. So just look in the mirror and say, I am the great I am because Jesus lives within me and he says that I can. God bless you.